John chapter 11, if you're there, shout at me and say I'm there. Verse 43 reads on this wise. Thank you, media team. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice and said, Lazarus, come forth. Verse 44 is too good not to read. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about him with a napkin but I love what Jesus does he saith unto them loose him and let him go Father, Savior, Healer, God on this sunny Sunday night in Marietta, before we ask you for anything, we thank you for everything. For this day you've allowed us to see, Lord, we say thank you. For the gift of the Holy Ghost, we say thank you. And yes, for the fact that last night, you didn't let it be our last night, we say thank you. We ask now that you do what only you can, heal, save, and deliver, bring high places down and make crooked places straight throw your weight around in the room and it's in Jesus name we pray every glad heart say amen say amen another time you may be seated in the presence of our great God I want to preach as we continue and I'm gonna try get closer to the conclusion of the Trauma Trap series, I want to preach a message tonight. I need honest people to take a little trip with me. Help me get my word out. Tell somebody next to you, say neighbor. Sometimes I feel like God played me. Sometimes, I told you it's for real folk. Sometimes I feel like God played me. Brothers and sisters, saints and friends, as we have discussed over these last few weeks this concept, this notion, this idea of trauma and overcoming it, we've talked about the importance of avoiding avoidance. We talked about the danger of trauma bonding and connecting with people solely on the level of your brokenness. We've talked about identifying triggers and all of these aspects of trauma, but tonight I have to pose a question. What exactly do you do when the one you're praying to is the one you secretly hold responsible? But what do you do when you're confronted with the uh, confusion surrounding what God said about you and to you Compared to what you see in front of you, what, what exactly do you do and how do you navigate when you've heard so many songs about how good God is and you've heard people testify that his eye is on the sparrow and therefore I know he's watching me. But what do you do when you're trying to figure out if he's watching you, why hasn't he helped you? Because while we want to play pretend tonight and while we want to act as if we've never been in that place, I'm crazy enough to believe that there are some of you that are real enough to say, I've had moments where I felt like God played in my face. I've watched him answer my prayers for other people. They didn't even want that. I've been praying for that. How did they get it? They... They're not consecrated like I am. They're not even trying, Lord. And I'm not perfect, but at least I'm trying. And still seems that whenever I take one foot forward, I'm pushed two steps back. How do I navigate this space when I hear that he loves me, but I don't feel the love? I would suggest to you that you look here in Scripture because John records in the gospel that bears his name, an interaction between Jesus and his friends. I, I, I lifted this minister Virginia in the last service. I think it's worth mentioning again that there, there's a lesson even there. Uh, please don't fall into the trap of thinking that because you're anointed, you're so anointed that you don't need no friends. 
Uh -huh. I I'm here to talk to you bougie, arrogant, standoffish folk that think that the deeper you are, the more spiritual you are. Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, even he had friends. And at some point, you got to grow up enough to realize you can keep spiritualizing your, your, your loneliness. Sometimes you got to remember he that would have friends must show himself friendly. Can I tell you, maybe you would have friends if you would start speaking to folk when church is over. You want the first one out the door at the end of amen? Jesus, even the Christ, has friends. He has several friends here. We know them by their name. Lazarus is his friend. His sister Martha and his other sister Mary are also Jesus' friends. But it comes on a day that Jesus is teaching in Bethany. He's, he's on the road. He's preaching. And he receives word that his friend is sick. I, I know that, that, that you can't tell by looking at everybody around you but some of you are sitting next to some people that are sick right now don't don't move your purse don't put your mask on I'm not talking about necessarily physically sick but there are some emotional wounds in the house right now there that there's some mental warfare that some of you all that have stood and clapped and shouted and, and God is good all the time all the time God is good you've gone through all those motions but there's still some illness in your mind in your emotion in your spirit but they show us that whenever there's sickness the best place to take it is closer to Jesus ah, yeah take your burdens to the Lord and leave them if you trust and never doubt he will surely bring you out take your burden to the Lord and leave it there they they take their burden to Jesus inform him by way of messenger that Lazarus his friend is sick they they send a messenger Jesus gets the word and you would think that he does what he jumps up from where he is he leaves the revival service runs to his donkey and rides to wherever they are but that's not what happens you you have to look in verse 4 to see how Jesus handles the situation he says after learning about his friend's sickness, he says right here, this sickness is not unto death, but it is for the glory of God that the Son of God might be glorified. I got to say that again because this is language for some of your level right now. There are some of you that are up against some things. Some of you are up against some obstacles. Some of you are up against some problems and you're wondering if you're going to die in this is my is my faith going to die in this Hannah is my joy going to die in this is my business going to die is my marriage going to die but I need you to hear the words of the Lord Jesus tonight this will not end in death but there will be glory after this Lord, which row, which section can I preach to tonight? Tell, tell somebody on your left, on your right, there will be glory after this. I uh, yes, Lord, I know that there are tears in this, but there will be glory after this. I, I know that there's pain during this, but there will be glory after this. I know there's heartache in the midst of this, but there will be glory. Somebody shout after this. He says this sickness is not unto death, but verse 5 gives us further intelligence. It says in verse 5, I love what John does. The writer here, he gives us a Additional insight into the nature of the relationship between Jesus and Lazarus and Martha and Mary. For he says in the beginning of verse 5 that Jesus loved Martha and her sister Mary and Lazarus. He loved them. Don't miss that. Don't skip over that. Don't ignore that. It says that Jesus loved them. He loves them. The Bible says that he loves them. But what comes after this statement is seemingly contradictory to the statement in the A clause of the verse because how can you tell me in the A clause that Jesus loves them but then in the B clause it says this he loved them comma but after hearing the news he stayed another two days in the place where he was wait a minute Jesus how can 
it be true that you love them and you refuse to go see about them. He, he loves them, but he waits. That doesn't make sense to us because we live in a world and in a reality where love is synonymous with instant intervention. Can I preach a little while? We live in a world where love means instant intervention. If you love me and you know I'm in trouble, then you got to come and get me out. If you love me and know that I'm bound up, you got to come get me out. But Jesus does not do that. He loves them, but he waits. And can I tell somebody in here that Jesus never wastes a wait. Uh, some of you all have been waiting a long time on some doors to come open. Some of you all around here have been waiting a long time for some ways to be made and for some situations to turn in your favor. But he loves them enough to wait because by waiting, what he does is put Lazarus in a position to not only see a miracle but to be a miracle and I don't know if I have anybody that will talk back to me on a Sunday night in Marietta but can I tell you thank you Holy Ghost it's one thing to see a miracle but it's another thing to be a part of the miracle oh yeah 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 how many of you let me see some help in here how many of you want to be a part of a miracle wave your hand at me I, I, I want to be a part of uh, that's exactly what I was afraid y'all was going to do you didn't wave your hand I want to be a miracle but wait a minute have you realized that a miracle is only possible if there is no other human explanation Okay, what are you saying, Pastor? All of y'all that just wager, oh, I want to be a part of a miracle. That does mean that in order to be part of a miracle, something might have to die in your life. Why? Because resurrection is a miracle, but there is no resurrection if there's not a death. I wish I could preach to somebody. I, I want to be, I want to be a part of a miracle. Okay, that's wonderful. Ooh, we thank God for your ministry. But understand, you can't be a part of a miracle until you've gotten down to the last of your money. You've called all your plugs, they can't help you. You've called all your family, they can't help you. You've called all your sources, they can't help you. The only way to get a miracle is to be in a place where nobody can get chloride but God and I'm wondering I'm going to ask you again with this new information if you still want to be a part of a miracle that means you ready you got to learn how to keep on praising when it looks like it's going crazy you got to learn how to keep on shouting when it looks like you're going to lose your mind you got to learn how to keep your hands raised when people are lying on you and scandalizing your name why because if don't nothing die then there can't be a resurrection but let me talk to all of you that have had to bury some things. Uh, let me tell you, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. You're about to see a miracle. Can you open your mouth uh, and just give God glory for 10 seconds uh, like a miracle is on the way right now. Hallelujah to God. Uh, can I have seven, just, just seven, just seven more, just, just seven more minutes. He, he loves them, but he waits uh, because he's going to make a miracle uh, out of Lazarus. Now, what's interesting about this uh, is that the only reason we know Lazarus, I've been saying this all day, it's worth saying again, the only reason, Dr. Martin, uh, that we know who Lazarus is, uh, is not because he was a great preacher. We've never heard him preach. Uh, the only the only reason we know who Lazarus is is not because he wrote an epistle to a church. We don't know Lazarus because he raised the sick. We don't know Lazarus because he baptized the whole city. The only reason we know Lazarus, Lord, they're not going to like it, but I got to say it because you told me to. The only reason we know Lazarus is because he died. Uh, I didn't think y'all was going to like it. His only claim to fame is he died. In fact, in fact, the best thing that ever happened to and for Lazarus is he 
died. Now, why, why do you have to say this, Pastor? I have to say this because there are some of you in here that want to ascend, you want to expand, you want to grow, you want to increase, you want to go to another level, you want people to know you, you want to lay hands and people fall out, you want to be booked and busy, you want to be on flyers, you want to be in first class. I understand that you want to do everything but die. And can I tell you that maybe your promotion is on the other side of your death. Oh, help me preach through here. Maybe your elevation is on the other side of your death. What do you mean, Pastor? Are you trying to speak death over me? Not to your physical body. No, but I am trying, Lord, help me say it with boldness. I'm trying to kill the part of you that God has been wanting you to bury all year long. You know that part of you that you keep giving CPR to? You know that part of your agenda that does not line up with God's plan for your life? You know that part of your will that does not match his will? Can I tell you sometimes the only thing waiting or hindering your promotion is God is waiting on you to die. But I need you to touch somebody and tell them neighbor. I speak over you that God's about to kill the part of you that's holding you back from your destiny. You didn't say it like I need you to say it. Tell him again. I speak that God's about to smother the part of you that's keeping you from reaching all that God has. Uh, because, 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 because the Bible says that Jesus finally says, well, uh, let me go see about Lazarus. Let, let me go wake him up. Let me, let me go wake him up. I, I need to, I need to do something with Lazarus. He goes and the Bible says that he's on his way to where uh, the house is. He's traveling from Bethany where he is in the kingdom. And while he's on the way, I want you to miss this. Don't miss this rather. While on the way, the Bible says that they run into Jesus and say, Jesus, we hate to be the bearers of of bad news but Lazarus is no longer sick he has died I need you to help me preach today and just look up and down your row and say neighbor he died you didn't say it right. Uh, say it like you know what loss feels like. Say, neighbor, he died. Uh, who died? Lazarus, the friend of Jesus. How in the world can I be a friend of the resurrection and I die? You got to make it make sense. How in the world can I be connected to the giver of life and I die? Didn't y'all come in here and tell me, I'm a friend of God. Da, 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 da. I'm a friend of God. Da, 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 da. I am a friend of God. He let me die. That don't make no sense. They didn't put that on. That ain't on the extended cut. That ain't on the album, the deluxe version. Because nobody makes friendship but synonymous with abandonment and some of you all are aggravated with God because you're trying to figure out if he really is my friend then why is he letting me go through this if he's really my friend why did he not come see about me but I need you to look at somebody and just tell them say neighbor trouble don't last always I need you to preach just a little bit better than that tell them real loud just say neighbor he may not come when or how you want him but say he's always on time and so then my brothers and my sisters the Bible the Bible the Bible says that they're on their way to the house and they come and stop Jesus and say Jesus Lazarus has died now what I want you to understand him is that Jesus hears the bad news but the bad news does not stop him from going in their direction because a whole lot of people would have heard that Jesus friend is dead and they would have turned around and went their own way but I need you to touch somebody I need you to touch somebody and say neighbor 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 even when it looks like it's too late for you 
He still is headed in your direction. Have I got a witness around here? I want to tell you that even when it looks like it's all over, he still wants to come in your direction because he's going to do something about your situation. Do I have anybody in him that could just testify and tell somebody this is a job for God? God. My money can't do it. This is a job for God. My degree can't do it. This is a job for God. He goes. He gonna knows. He goes to where the house is. And somebody inside. They tell Martha and Mary. They say, uh-huh, here come your boy. Here come Mr. Messiah, man. You know the one that healed everybody else, but couldn't make it to the bedside service. They said, finally, Jesus is on the way. And I like what Martha does, because both of them are in the house. There's Martha and Mary. And Mary just keeps on working. But Martha puts her flat shoes on. And she leaves where she is. And she goes to where Jesus is. And I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Is there anybody here that has a Martha spirit? That can say, I will not wait until Jesus comes to my house. But I... I'm going where he is You want to have found your neighbor And say I'm going To where Jesus is That's why I came to church tonight I had to be where Jesus is That's why I got on my Sunday clothes I had to be where Jesus is If don't nobody else I, 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 I Want to go where he is I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and come in his courts, in his courts with praise. I hate to say it today on such a record breaking Sunday. Over a thousand folk in church, 117 new members, 500 signed up for Detroit, but still y'all ain't come to have no church. What's wrong with these saints, Lord? Y'all ain't come to have no church. Y'all ain't come to have no church. Y'all ain't come to have no church. But is there anybody in? Is there anybody here? I'm trying to find somebody. Is there anybody here that'll get your sanitizer and rub it in real good? And why don't you just lean over and grab your neighbor by the hand and say, ah! Get something from Jesus And She rolls up on him And says Jesus If you would have been here My brother wouldn't have died If you would have came When we called him We wouldn't have been in this situation If you would have shown up When we first prayed We would have had a better outcome But look at what Jesus does He says, hold on, hold on. He says, hold on. I want to tell you that your brother will rise again. I feel preaching power here. Tell, tell your neighbor, I got a word for you. Whatever's died in your life, say the Holy Ghost said, it's gonna rise again. Your family gonna rise. It's gonna rise again. Your money gonna rise. It's gonna rise again. Your dream, I, 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 I. it's gonna rise again. You ain't talking to the right neighbor, cause they not shouting with you.
you ha! Tell ha! Tell somebody ha! It's gonna rise again ha! Ain't no grave ha! Can hold your dream down ha! But look at what Jesus said ha! He said he's gonna rise ha! But Mary says ha! Or rather Martha says ha! I read my Bible ha! I know he's gonna rise ha! In the great resurrection ha! Because the Bible said ha! That one of these days ha! The trumpet of God ha! Is going to sound ha! And ha! The dead in Christ Are gonna rise ha! And so she said ha! I know one day ha! When you crack the sky ha! My brother's gonna rise ha! But Jesus stands there ha! With a smile on his face ha! And said no 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 ha! I'm not talking about ha! The great resurrection ha! I am ha! I am the resurrection ha! And whenever I show up ha! Yeah! Ha! Everything ha! That's died in your life ha! Has got to come back ha! I need you to prophesy ha! With your body language ha! And just touch somebody ha! And say congratulations On your resurrection Congratulations ha! On your comeback ha! Your setback ha! Was a setup ha! For your comeback ha! It ain't over ha! It ain't over ha! It ain't over ha! No, no, no ha! No, no, no ha! It ain't over ha! She catches the word ha! Runs to the house ha! Gets a sister Mary ha! Goes to the grave ha! And Jesus says ha! What I came to ask you tonight ha! He said where ha! Where ha! Where have you laid it? And that's my assignment tonight. I gotta ask somebody, where have you laid your dead dream? Where did you lay your dead promise? Where did you lay the thing God showed you? I wanna know, where did you bury your ministry? I wanna know, where did you bury the goal for your family I want to know When did you bury The world over your life And over your finance Cause God told me To tell Mary Ellen If you can find Where you laid it I can raise it Show me Where you gave up On going after all of it I want to raise it He said roll Roll, I roll the stone away. He stood there and said, Lazarus, come forward. And you know what happened. Out of the grave came out Lazarus. He was bound hand and foot. He had a face covered by a napkin. His hands were bound, his feet were bound, which signifies his lack of mobility. I'm preaching to those that have been stuck in the same place. God told me to tell you, you're about to get your mobility. Y'all don't believe it here. Y'all don't believe it here. If you receive it, just take a few steps out of your seat. Just to tell the devil, I got my legs back. And I'm moving out of less and moving the more. I'm moving from not enough to more than enough. I'm moving from less than to more than. Ain't God all right? He said, your feet are bound, but his hands were bound, which was his ability. And some of y'all haven't been able to take care of yourself, haven't been able 
to provide Haven't been able to get some done Haven't been able to make ends meet Haven't been able to sleep at night But the Lord said I'm getting ready 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 To loose your hands So you can work Grab somebody And say name I I I Got a work to do Yes I do And I'm gonna do it But he also said Somebody must be praying That his face was covered Which hindered his vision I'm preaching to those That his vision's been hindered I'm preaching to those That haven't been able To see where you're going Or to see your future I'm preaching to those That haven't been able To see your way out I'm preaching to those that have a vision for a business that seems obstructed. Here's what the Bible said. Jesus says, loose him, loose him, loose him, loose him, and let him go. And I, I need somebody to grab your neighbor and shake him by the hand and say neighbor it's your season to be freed from every shackle in the graveyard and say neighbor you owe God praise because the Bible said that when Jesus called his name it says he that was dead came on out you don't know it tonight but you just shook hands with somebody that was dead was a mess was a drunk was an addict was a fornicator was an adulterer was a liar was a backbiter was a gossiper was depressed was anxious was suicidal but God has taken your issue and put it in the past tell somebody you know what I was but it's under the blood I'm not what I used to be and so look where it brought me from brought me out of darkness and into a marvelous light and whom the sun sets free is 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 free indeed ain't it all right i need the free folk to touch somebody and say neighbor i'm free i'm out i'm over it i'm better god wasn't playing he made me a testimony and now that i'm out now that i'm out Telling the world he's able, he's able, he still heals, he still saves. If you believe it, lift your voice, open your mouth, and give him glory.